I'm leaving for SEMA in two days, but before I go, I wanna see how much work we can smash around on this trailer in a very short window of time. In last week's episode, we cobbled together a basic structure so we can kind of get an idea of the direction this trailer is going to be headed. But today I want to test a couple of different ideas that I have for a door. I want to make sure that it seals really nice and tight and at the same time is super durable so we know we won't have any issues with it opening when we go on rough terrain. If you watched the last video, I had to stop early because I broke a camera lens and I was just... I didn't want to work anymore. So I was going to build a battery box here. I still plan on doing that, but in this video, I'm not going to mess with that battery box. So what I want to do is tackle something that I just got all the material to do, and that is to build a giant door that's going to be right here in front of the rig. So I've got some nitrogen charged shocks that'll lift it up. If it's powerful enough to lift it with a tire on it, then we'll mount the tire to the door. But if that won't work, then we're gonna have to build some sort of a swing out tire carrier to swing out of the way whenever we open this door. I was born up in the mountain, raised by an old grizzly bear. I was born up in the mountain, raised by an old grizzly bear. I slept by Mother Nature, and I breathed fresh, clean, natural air. After tacking together the basic structure that's going to go around the door, I want to work on the door sill. And so basically, I'm going to have this as a two-piece seal, an inner seal and an outer seal. The first part we're going to work on is the inner seal, and it's just going to be two different sizes of angle iron that look like they're going to nest together. This is an idea that I've had for a long time that I've never gotten to use on a project, so I'm excited to see how this comes together. I've never built a door like this before, but my idea was just to get two different chunks of angle iron or two different sizes of angle iron that will nest together. So we've got some half inch by half inch and some three quarter by three quarter. And the idea is that whenever we shut the door, this is going to nest into the three quarter by three quarter. And then I could just put a rubber seal all the way around it and hopefully seal out some of the dirt and water and whatnot that's gonna get shot off of the rear tires and into this door. It's not super important to me that this is like dust proof or waterproof, but we just wanna reduce the amount of stuff that's gonna get into this while we're driving around and using it. I made a little mistake whenever I chose the mounting depth of the lower part of this sill, but this is a great example of when it's nice to have tack welds instead of just doing complete welds as you move along. All I have to do is cut a couple of these tacks out of the way, move it to the right depth, and then re-weld it. Well, Master Jeff came by to see me, but I told him I was ready to go. No. You can take your skull face and leave on out this place I ain't gonna go. I'm gonna live, go back to the river sticks, I ain't gonna go. It ain't my time to die, no. Leave me alone.
As you can see, the door is pretty much scabbed together. I've got the frame in place. I evenly spaced everything out and then I tacked, I used a ton of tacks to hold the skin on. I don't, I, I wanna finish making this door functional before I finish weld anything. Because at this point, even though I have a bunch of tacks, I could still cut all the tacks much easier than cutting complete welds. And uh, if anything needs to get moved or shifted, it's just, it's gonna be so much easier moving forward. So now what I need to do is build a hinge system. And I know I keep saying it every video and you're gonna keep hearing it. <laughs> this is a budget, um, it's as budget friendly as I can make it with the tools and the uh, materials I have laying around. So these are gonna turn into our hinges. This is a couple of YJ leaf spring bushings that I had laying around. We don't have the sleeves for the inside, so we're just gonna make do with this all thread. It's three quarter all thread and it fits right in there. I'm pretty sure that's three quarter. Whatever it is, it's all thread I had laying around and it fits perfect. So this is free, that's why we're using it. Um, I'm gonna use some DOM tube. Again, I've got a lot of extra DOM tube from all the four by four projects that I do. So we're just gonna use two inch DOM to go around this and then we're gonna use some quarter inch flat bar to like turn into some brackets and stuff. So I've got a basic idea how this is gonna work, but I don't really know exactly how it's gonna work until I start taking measurements and cutting material. When I scratch build brackets like this, I do everything I can to make these brackets as identical as possible, and I wanna do it as quickly as possible. So what I'll do is I'll weld a bunch of the brackets together on one side, and then whenever I shape them, it'll make them all super, super similar. And then whenever I need to drill a hole, I can basically just drill one hole through all four brackets. For me, this has always felt like the most time effective and cost effective way to accomplish this task. Mounting gas charge struts can be a little bit tricky and for that reason I like to drill multiple holes in my brackets because this will make it to where it's easier to adjust where things need to be and sometimes even though you measure a whole bunch and you're certain that it's going to work, whenever you go to close that door, it doesn't always work exactly like you thought it would. There it is. There's some adjustments that still need to, be, need to be made. I want this door to open up higher, so we're gonna have to adjust where the struts are mounted, but everything's working. So these are 150 pound struts, and it, it like pushes me out of the way. I have no doubt that mounting a tire to this door is gonna work perfect. So unfortunately, we're out of time today to do that kind of thing. So I will put an Amazon shopping cart together for this video where it'll have the struts. If you're interested in struts like that, they're super heavy duty, they're 150 pound. I've had them for over a year and a half on my one ton truck to lift the rooftop tent out of the way and they sit in the weather 24 seven and they still work great. These are little latches that we're gonna use. I wanna use two, even though we could probably get away with one just because I think that we're gonna get better clamping force to keep this door, it's like, you know, squishing that weather seal and whatnot if we have one of these on each side. So let's see, let's talk about these hinges. These hinges, I think, are gonna turn out really good. But right now, they're just kind of scabbed on there. I have everything tacked. I've got, I mean, it's a bunch of heavy duty tacks, but it's kind of amazing they're holding up because right now there's technically, there's 150 pounds of force going right up on the hinge. But anyway, we're gonna box those in, top and bottom. They're gonna be super beefy when we're done. And we're gonna even like drill holes through the skin and weld backing plates on the backside and then put that, you know, weld those backing plates into the frame of the door. So these hinges are gonna turn out perfect. Um, what else? I think that's it. What I wanna do before we end this video is I wanna throw the rooftop tent on there. My brother's on his way over. I'm getting a new ro rooftop tent for my Land Rover tomorrow from CVT on my way to SEMA. 
And so I'm gonna pull the old rooftop tent off and I wanna see what it looks like on top of this trailer. I think this is pretty close to what it's gonna look like when it's all done. I, I like the idea of having a spare tire in front and I, I want lots of tongue weight. I'm, I'm someone who is a big fan of tongue weight. I think that uh, a trailer is way more predictable when you have tongue weight, so we'll see. We'll get exact weights and all that as we progress on this project. But in any case, I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. This is really hard without a wide angle lens. If you see me at SEMA, come say what's up. I'm very friendly. If you see me at Death Valley this weekend, well actually, I'll be in Death Valley literally when this video goes live. Or if you see me in Idaho the week after, come say what's up. I've got a bunch of stuff planned over this next week and a half. I've got a bunch of off-road content. And then as soon as we get back, we're gonna continue on this trailer. So again, hope you enjoyed it. Give the video a thumbs up if you did. And uh, if you wanna, Support the channel and go to thedirtlifestyle.com. T-shirts, hats, net gators. We have a link to our Patreon account. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.